Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some common mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. I didn't meet any Russians, like there were no Russians in the place where I were. I cannot say there were no Russians in the place where I were. I have to say was. It's correct to say there were no Russians in the place where I was. In this sentence, we cannot use were. Were is for you were and they were. We use were for plural. But if it's I, we say I was, he was, she was, and it was. The only time you can say I were is if you have a conditional. Example, if I were the president, I would live in the White House. But this is not a conditional, so we have to say was. There were no Russians in the place where I was. This is also not correct. Hey, I'm so excited to talk with you. Thanks for inviting. I cannot say thanks for inviting. I need an object. I have to say me. Me is the object. Thanks for inviting me. If it's one person, thanks for inviting me. If it's two people, thanks for inviting us. But whenever you say thanks for inviting, you need an object. You have to use an object with this sentence. So I cannot say thanks for inviting. I have to say thanks for inviting me. So let's practice. Example, I invited you to my party. What do you say? That's right. Thanks for inviting me. Let's practice. Example, I invited you and your friend to my party. What do you say? That's right. Thanks for inviting us. Very good. This is also not correct. I was like, I cannot understand British accent. I cannot say I don't understand British accent. When you talk about accents, we have to use the article the. The British accent. Sometimes you can use the article a. A British accent. Let's talk about the difference. If you say I don't understand, we have to use the article the. I don't understand the British accent. Because you're talking about the accent as a whole, spoken by all the people who speak with that accent. We use the in this case. I don't understand the British accent. So it's not correct to say, I don't understand British accent. We have to use the article, the. I don't understand the British accent. So when can you say, a, uh, a British accent? Example, one person. This guy, he speaks. He speaks with a British accent. In this case, I cannot say, the. He speaks with the British accent. Because I'm not talking about the accent as a whole, spoken by all the people who speak with this accent. I'm talking about one person. So I use the article, a. Uh. He speaks with a British accent. I speak with an American accent. When you talk about a person, use the article a. Uh. He speaks with a British accent. And it doesn't have to be just one person. It can be two people. They. They speak with a British accent. But if you say, I don't understand, you're talking about the accent as a whole. So we say the. I don't understand the British accent. We need an article in both cases. So whenever you use the word accent, you need an article. Either a or the, depending on the situation. Let's practice. Do you understand the British accent? Very good. Let's practice. Does he speak with a British accent? That's right. He speaks with a British accent. Do they speak with a British accent? That's right. They speak with a British accent. This is also not correct. And I felt a little depressed, but that was also a huge motivation for me to continue. I cannot say that was also huge motivation for me to continue. In this case, motivation is countable. I have to say, uh. I have to use the article, uh, when talking about motivation in this case. That was a huge motivation for me to continue is correct. We have to use, uh. It's confusing because sometimes motivation is countable and sometimes it's not. I can talk about motivation in general and say, motivation is important. You need motivation in your life to do things, to achieve your goals. You need motivation. But if I talk about a specific case and I say, that was also, this is a specific case. It's one time. We have to say a motivation. That was a huge motivation for me to continue. I have to use a when talking about motivation in this case. This is also not correct. And it doesn't matter that I've been studying English for like, 10 years by that time? It's not correct to say it doesn't matter that I've been studying English for 10 years by that time. When I say by that time, I'm referring to a point in the past. 
in relation to another action in the past. So correctly it should be, it didn't matter that I had been studying English for 10 years by that time. That I had been studying English for 10 years by that time. You can make the contraction. I had, together, I'd, I'd been. I'd been studying English for 10 years by that time. Together, it didn't matter that I'd been studying English for 10 years by that time. This is also not correct. So, before leaving, I went to a bookstore. You cannot say, before leaving, I went to bookstore. Bookstore is a countable noun, so we have to use an article. We can say, a bookstore. So it's correct to say, before leaving, I went to a bookstore. Or you can use the article, the. Before leaving, I went to the bookstore. What's the difference? If you're talking about one bookstore in general, you say, a. Uh. You use the article, a. Uh. Before leaving, I went to a bookstore. But if it's a specific bookstore, a bookstore that I told you about earlier and you know about, I can use the specific article, the. Before leaving, I went to the bookstore. You know the one I'm talking about. Or if you live in a small town and there's only one bookstore in the whole town, then you can say the. If only one exists, we use the article the. Before leaving, I went to the bookstore. Because you know which one I'm talking about because there's only one in the town. But if you live in a big city, it's better to use a. Before leaving, I went to a bookstore. It's one of many bookstores that exist in that city. Use the article a. But we cannot say, before leaving, I went to bookstore. We need an article. Sometimes a and sometimes the, depending on the situation. Let's practice. When was the last time you went to a bookstore? Very good. This is also not correct. Second, I have really weird Russian accent. People don't get what I'm saying. You cannot say I have really weird Russian accent. Again, we're talking about accent. We talked about accent before where you can say the accent, example, the British accent or a British accent. So the same is true for the Russian accent or a Russian accent. If I say the Russian accent, I'm talking about the accent as a whole. But in this example, you're talking about one person speaking with one accent. So it's a, a Russian accent. It's correct to say I have a really weird Russian accent. You have to put a before both modifiers. I have a really weird Russian accent. Because you're talking about accent, we have to use the article a uh, in this situation. Let's practice with accent. Do you have an accent? Very good. What kind of accent do you have? Very good. This is also not correct. It's actually a lot of places around the world where people have different uh, ideas, different goals in their lives. I cannot say it's a lot of places around the world. I have to express existence with there is or there are. I cannot use it is or its because I'm expressing existence. I use there is or there are. In this case, a lot of places is plural, so we say there are. There are a lot of places around the world is correct. I cannot say it is or it's a lot of places around the world. Example, there are a lot of places around the world where people speak English. Let's practice. Are there a lot of places around the world where people speak English? That's right. Very good. There are a lot of places around the world where people speak English. I cannot say it's a lot of places around the world. I have to express existence with there are. This is also not correct. Yeah, when we graduated from an accelerator here in Silicon Valley, I had a, a presentation. I was on the stage in front of 700 top investors here who invest in Uber, Facebook. I cannot say I was in the stage. When talking about stage, we use the preposition on. We cannot use the preposition in. So you can say, I was on the stage, or more commonly, I was on stage. Both are correct. On the stage or on stage. I think on stage is more common, but they're both correct. So it's correct to say I was on stage, but not in stage or in the stage. We have to use on in both situations. Either I was on the stage or I was on stage. I have been on stage a few times, performing, singing in school, things like that. And usually I get nervous when I'm on stage. What about you? Do you get nervous when you're on stage?
very good. This is also not correct. But he gave me all the brochures and I... I cannot say brochures. We move the stress and we move the stress to the second syllable, brochures. We have to put the stress on the second syllable. Again, brochures, brochures. I cannot say brochures. We have to put the stress on the second syllable, brochures. And what are brochures? We have three different words for this thing. You can say brochures, pamphlets, or flyers. And we use a phrasal verb, hand out. He's handing out brochures. Or I can say he's handing out pamphlets. And I can also say he's handing out flyers. Hand out is the phrasal verb we use when you give these things to many people. He's handing out pamphlets. He's handing out flyers or he's handing out brochures. Not brochures, but brochures. Let's practice. Is he handing out brochures? That's right. He's handing out brochures. Is he handing out pamphlets? That's right. He's handing out pamphlets. Is he handing out flyers? That's right. He's handing out flyers. So remember, brochures, pamphlets, and flyers. You're talking about the same thing. This is also not correct. Second, you also need to understand that if you want to do like master's degree or PhD or MBA. I cannot say do master's degree. First, master's degree is countable. I have to say a, a master's degree. Whenever you're talking about degrees, it's always countable. A bachelor's degree, a master's degree. We have to use the article a. Now, what about the verb do? We don't do a master's degree. We use the verb get. You get a master's degree. So again, it's not correct to say do master's degree. We have to say get a. Get a master's degree. And we see that T and get change to a fast D. Get a, get a, get a master's degree. I don't have a master's degree. I would love to get a master's degree. What about you? Do you want to get a master's degree? Very good. This is also not correct. You have basketball fields. You have, I don't know, many buildings. I cannot say basketball fields. These are not fields. The place where you play basketball is not a field. It's a court. So we cannot say basketball fields. We have to say basketball courts. Example, they're playing basketball on the basketball court. It's not a field. It's a court. Let's practice. Are they playing basketball on the basketball court? That's right. They're playing basketball on the basketball court. And remember, when you talk about courts, we use the preposition on. They're playing basketball on the basketball court. Keep watching for more information about the difference between a court and a field and practice with other sports-related vocabulary. Thanks for watching and keep watching. We're at Campbell Community Center here in Campbell, California. It's in Silicon Valley and we're looking for handball courts. These guys are playing handball. It's a sport like racquetball, but you don't have a racket, you use your hand. And the area they're playing in is a court. It's a handball court. They're playing handball in the handball court. And this is also called a court, but this is a tennis court. And they're playing tennis. They're tennis players. Here we have one tennis court and two tennis courts. He just served the ball. That's the action when you start the game. You serve the ball. Serve, just like you serve food. We found a skate park. This is called a skate park, where people practice riding skateboards. At the skate park, they have ramps and half pipes. This is a half pipe because it's like a pipe cut in half. So it's called a half pipe. This is a track and people are exercising on the track. Some people are running on the track, some people are jogging on the track, and some people are walking on the track. Jog, in the continuous form jogging, is when you run slowly. So some people are jogging on the track. 
pronunciation of track. The TR makes a ch ch chicken sound with the R together. Ch ch er chur track. Use the short a ah sound like apple and black cat. Track. They're walking on the track. They're practicing football on the field. This is a football field. And we use the preposition on. They're practicing football on the field. If you say in the field, that is only correct for animals. Animals are in the field, on a farm. But these are football players and they're playing or practicing on the field. This is a football field. That's right, here in America, this is football. Because soccer is a different sport. You don't say American football, you just say football. They're practicing football on the football field. We're walking on the track, getting some exercise. Hey Lisa, are you walking on the track? Yep, I'm walking on the track. I'm exercising. I'm exercising on equipment. This is exercise equipment. Remember, equipment is not countable. I cannot say one equipment and two equipments. It's all just equipment. There's a lot of exercise equipment here. Oh, if you need to count, we can say one piece of equipment. Example, one expensive piece of equipment. But these are not very expensive. Very good, Kevin. Thank you. Are you getting stronger? I think so. I hope so. I'm getting tired. Kevin is getting tired. But he's also getting stronger. Uh. Are you pooped? <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. I'm pooped. I can't do any more. Is it I'm fun? Exercising. Is it fun? It's difficult. It's kind of fun. Oh, it's very hard. <laughs> I'm very weak. Two reps. You did two reps. Rep is short for repetition. You did two reps. Good job. Yay! This is boring. I don't like that. This is special exercise equipment for people in wheelchairs. It's special exercise equipment for handicapped people. See? These are special benches. We don't call these benches. We call them bleachers. That's right, bleachers, using the long E sound like green beans. Bleachers. These are called bleachers. These are called bleachers, but when people are sitting in them, you can say they're sitting in the bleachers or they're sitting in the stands. There are no people sitting in the stands today because there's no game. You can call these stairs or you can call these steps because there are only a few of them you can say steps or stairs. But we have another option. What's this? This is called a ramp. It's one thing, so we say uh, it's countable. This is a ramp. A ramp is for people in wheelchairs. So you can say it's a wheelchair ramp. But it's definitely a ramp. Pronunciation uses a short ah sound like black cat, ra, ramp. The ah sound changes a little before the M. It goes more nasal in your nose. Ram. Ramp. This is a ramp. After exercising, I get thirsty. So I want to drink water. But I'm not going to drink all of it. I'm only going to take a few swigs. That's right. One drink, one big drink, can be a swig. You can also call it a gulp. But if it's a fast drink, a fast big drink, that's a swig. I'm going to take a few swigs and then I'm going to go back and exercise some more. I'm taking a few swigs of water. I'm thirsty, but I'm not going to take a swig. I'm going to take a little sip. 